Hello and welcome back to Payday 2 101 with your host, as always, Majora Bread. Today's episode is going to be about a very general mastermind build that I've made here. The purpose of this is that uh, people can level up through mastermind with this build to see if they like it and get a feel for mastermind. From then on, of course, they could respec into something else if they'd like to, but this is just for beginners and, of course, for leveling up through it, hence skills like Fast Learner. I'll get into this, um, guess now. But before we actually go into the mastermind tree, I want to show you what you're going to want from the other trees. Right here on Ghost, aside from martial artist here, this is going to be what you're going to be seeing a lot from me. Of If you don't really need to go into Ghost, here are the necessary things. You get your ECM Jammer, Sprinter Ace so that you're running faster and getting your stamina back on it faster. Also better dodge chance while moving, which is important. Basic Cat Burglar so you take significantly less non-fatal uh, fall damage. Of course, there is still the threshold of if you drop past this, it will be fatal no matter what. Fast Hands Ace, everyone should have this, it's you interact with loop eggs faster. And Shinobi Basic, you walk faster and crouch walk faster, very important. We also have martial arts here, so you can knock down enemies 50% more of the time with a melee strike. It's, uh, it's nice, but it's mostly just because we had a point left over. Next into Technician, we have our Trip Mines, just to unlock the tier. Ace to Nerves of Steel. You want basic Nerves of Steel on everything, which will be 50% less damage while interacting with things. Ace will get you Steel Sight and Bleed Out, helps a lot. As long as you have a scope, that is. Of some sort. Snap to Zoom Faster and Increased uh, Zoom Range with Assault Rifles and Snipers. This has a bit of synergy with some skills we'll be looking at later in Mastermind. And lastly, 20% more ac accurate with all single shot weapons. This will apply to almost every pistol in the game. There is one auto pistol, of course. And uh, as a Mastermind, you will be using pistols a lot. Enforcer, we actually have quite a bit, entirely because we want to help tank yourself up a bit, what with how Mastermind is the only skill tree in the game that has no defensive skills. So we have our ammo bag, of course. Aced Transporter, because it's a necessary thing. Carry bags faster and throw bags farther. We have a Oppressor Basic, just to get to the next tiers. Uh, that makes you more effective at threatening weapons, or threatening enemies, rather, with loud weapons. It doesn't do a whole lot. Die Hard Aced, so your armor recovers faster and you can use your primary and bleed out. You'll likely not use your primary and bleed out, as I'll get into later, but armor faster, always important. Underdog Aced, you take and deal 15% less and more damage for when you're surrounded. And Stun Resistance Aced, so that uh, you don't get blind for nearly as long, as well as Tough Guy Basic, less camera shake when you're damaged. This applies to punches as well, I believe, and punches can really disorient you. Stun Resistance, uh, it used to be a useless skill during the early days of Payday, but ever since they buffed Flashbang Grenades, these, uh, this skill is incredible, because one bad Flashbang on the party can really mess you up. Finally, we're on to the main tree here. Now, this guide isn't going to show you the order of where to get all these skills. A lot of it is up to you, but if there's any one thing you want to beeline, is you're level zero, you want to start leveling up, no matter what you are, Immediately get Mastermind Unlocked, Ace Endurance, then Ace Fast Learner. Uh, I believe you might actually have to get Basic in another thing first, but my point still stands, you Ace Fast Learner the moment you can. This will get you much, 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 much more experience, as well as getting more experience for your entire crew. Into actually what we want overall here. Let's say you're level 100 and for whatever reason you want to use this build. Or let's say you just hit level 100 being going through this build, what do you have? You have Aced Cable Guy, so you carry a total of six cable ties, and you cable tie people very quickly. This is a skill that you'll see most builds have, although a few Death Wish ones don't. You'll see Combat Medic, this will help you get people up with more health, and you'll also have a damage bonus when you recover people. This is important, although this is not a hardcore medic build, you will have most of the medic stuff. Endurance Aced, most people tend to have this, you and your crew have much, 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 much more stamina for sprinting. Fast Learner Ace, I explained that one. Leadership Basic, this is increased stability for you and your crew with pistols. Uh, some people like to ace this, it's often you'll find someone on the team with it aced. Personally, I think that with this build at least, you only need Basic, it helps you with your pistols. Dominator Ace, this means you and your crew can intimidate people into cuffing themselves. Uh, that is to say, enemy police officers. This is actually quite powerful. 
because uh, paired with the Joker, which we'll have later here, you can convert them to fight alongside you. The reason we want this ace is increases the power range of your intimidation by 50%. That is actually quite important. A lot of people don't seem to understand the importance of that, but the range of your intimidation means that you can get people to surrender from possibly very far away. Equilibrium has to be aced, of course. Um, the default one of increased accuracy a little and decreased time to take out and pull a, uh, to take out and uh, put away pistols is decreased. Not a huge difference, but it's nice. Aced is what's the big difference here. Double the rate of fire. So basically, with most of your pistols, they're shooting as fast as you can click. It's pretty important. Combat Doctor Aced, this is another thing that makes you a great medic. You have two Doctor Bags instead of one, they have two more charges. That means instead of one Doctor Bag that can be used twice, you have two that can be used four times each. So eight uses. This is incredible to have someone on the team with this ability. Next is Gunslinger, your other main pistol upgrading skill. Reload pistols 50% faster, it's very nice. And of course Aced, deal 50% more damage with pistols. This can make some weapons like the Bronco or the Deagle into massive damage dealers, especially the Bronco. Can be one of the most powerful guns in the game. Helps make up for its bad ammo, of course. Kilmer. This is where that synergy comes in with the assault rifles. This is a skill that a lot of people seem to pass up, but I find that any mastermind, who's focusing on mastermind at least, has a lot of points in mastermind, should really get, and even ace. Increased reload speed with assault rifles and sniper rifles by 25%. That alone is actually quite no uh, noticeable and quite nice, but aced. While moving, your weapon accuracy with assault rifles and sniper rifles is increased by 50%. That's a huge deal, actually, for hipfire headshots while strafing. And also run and reload. While you're sprinting, you can still reload. That isn't just to assault rifle that's, rifles, that's any gun. That's incredible. Absolutely incredible ability. And last thing we have here aced is Inspire, one of the best uh, abilities in the game. When you get people up, you can get them up 50% faster. That's a huge deal. You can help people up in about 3 seconds. You can also yell at your teammates so that they'll move 20% faster for 10 seconds. That's very, very nice, especially when they're carrying something heavy, like, say, a server on day 2 of Firestarter. And aced. 75% of the time you yell at one of your allies who are lying down, they'll just get back up. It counts as picking them up, of course, it goes towards their custody count. However, it's much preferable to actually just picking them up with your hands. You don't need to be within interaction range, you can yell at them through walls, in fact. As long as they're within a certain radius of you, you can yell through floors and walls, anything you want, and they'll get back up 75% of the time. If it doesn't work once, you can always just keep yelling at them. The only real disadvantage of this ability is that, um... Often you'll find a problem where if enemies are surrounding the person you should be getting up, sometimes you yell at them to put up their hands instead of the person on the ground to get up. They've recently patched that so that it doesn't happen as often. It usually prioritizes getting them up, but it's still a little bit finicky. So, all around it's a good thing, but you really should be clearing the uh, person where you're going to get them up before you get them up anyway, so... Really, it's not a massive deal, it's just when time is of the es essence, it can cause a problem. That's it for the skill build onto the loadout. Our main primary weapon for shootouts in this will be the Loud Car 4 here that I've made. You can see all the stats right here. As we go into it, I'll show you the weapon mods. We've got a long barrel on it. We've got the Competitor's Compensator. Now, you'll only have the Competitor's Compensator if you have the Gauge Courier Pack mod. If you don't have that, then I would recommend putting perhaps the Stubby Compensator on it. That would be a nice, um, nice alternative. We don't have any custom on it. For 4 grip, I have the Gazelle Rail on it. I believe, otherwise you would normally only have the Aftermarket Special, which is good. You could put that on if you don't have the the gauge mod courier pack. For gadget, of course, the military laser module, you want to put that on almost everything loud. If you don't have god... G nah! Gauge mod courier pack, then you can always go with tactical laser module. It's more important to have the laser than it is the assault light. For grip, pro grip. Rubber grip is basically the same thing. You could do either one. For the magazine, Quad stack mag. Always, always, always. If you don't have it for whatever reason, then you want to go with the tactical mag. For the sight, 
Uh, a lot of the sites are up to personal preference, although, if you have the mod pack, I go with the Speculator site. This is my favorite site, as you can see here. Very thin sides of it, doesn't hurt your peripherals much, and it's nice wide and open, you can see a lot within it. If you don't have the pack, let's say you have no DLC, then I'm a fan of the holographic site. This is the nice backup. The, your peripherals are hurt a little bit more, you don't see quite as much, however, it's a nice alternative. For your stock, you want the Wartorn stock. If you don't have the DLC, then the tactical stock is probably your next best bet. Or wide stock. I, no, no, wide, wide stock's gauge mod. Okay, tactical stock will do. And for upper receiver, there's only one upper receiver you can get. This is your go-to loud car for. Uh, or loud gun in general, really, for a primary weapon. Unless you are going to be doing a definite shootout, in which case I would go with a heavy AMR here. AMR-16, that is. It's not nearly as friendly on ammo. You should be using single shot on any assault rifle in most instances, but this is not nearly as friendly on ammo, so be very careful with it. Make sure you've got someone on the crew with some good ammo bags. Also keep in mind that my loadouts in these videos are all going to be for overkill difficulty and lower. I'll be doing a specific video for loadouts you want to take on Death Wish. So of course we have the long barrel, we have the funnel of fun on this one, although competitor's compensator is also a good go-to. Funnel of fun is the most powerful one, if you want an alternative, fire breather or stubby are nice go-tos. Tactical handguard here for stability. Laser module, again, just take whatever laser one you have. For the grip, ripper grip, pro grip, either one's good. Quad stack for the uh, magazine, or tactical if you don't have that. I still have my old holographic on this one, actually, but, again, I actually like the Speculator more. In fact, don't know why I didn't have that one on already. For stock, War Torn stock all the way. Uh, there are only stocks for this, actually, if you have the DLC, so if you don't, no stock, sorry. And Upper Receiver, the only one available. Both of these guns share a lot of mods. On to secondary shootout weapons here. We are going with my, my sniper pistol, my Deagle. This is a deagle built to be a loud, powerful, scary weapon. This is uh, very powerful in the hands of a mastermind. Only really masterminds should use pistols, for the most part. We have a flash hider on this. This makes it very, very powerful. If you don't have the DLC, I actually recommend having no barrel extension. For extra, deagle scope mount. If you don't have the DLC, then you don't have that at all. Pocket laser. Pocket laser is nice on any pistol. For your grip, uh, you could take either one and they're okay, they're both good, but I like the bling grip for stability because that's what this gun lacks. Extended magazine, of course, more bullets in the clip. For the sight, this is only if you have DLC can you put on a sight, but the uh, pistol red dot sight I quite like. And for the slide, long barrel. You don't have many choices with a lot of these pistols, but that gets you a very powerful pistol. This is your Chimano Custom. It's incredibly nice on ammo, but this is one that I would only recommend to a mastermind, otherwise it simply doesn't have the damage output that you'd need. However, uh, it is very, very nice if you're a mastermind, and in fact much nicer if you're a mastermind mixed with a technician to the point that you have the headshot bonus. This build doesn't, but keep that in mind. I like the Velocity Compensator on this, gives you a nice little bit of damage. Pocket Laser if you have any, I didn't have one to spare. Ergo Grip for more stability. Extended Magazine gives you many more bullets in the clip. Pistol Red Dot Sight if you have it. And Long Slide. Again, this doesn't have much customization to it, but it's very, very light on ammo. Carries a ton of it. You pick up, I think, five or six bullets every time you pick up an ammo pack, so this is a great one. Lastly, for going loud, we're on to the Bronco. One of the strongest guns in the game, in fact this used to be the second strongest gun in the game for quite a long time until the snipers came in. This is the Bronco 34? 44? I actually forget what the uh, full name of it is. This is the strongest pistol in the game. Terrible on ammo, barely has any ammo for it just like the Deagle, but my god is it strong. So we've got a flash hider on this, if you have no DLC then you don't have the flash hider. Gives you much more damage and stability, but hurts accuracy, so there is something to be said about not having a flash hider. Bronco scope mount, that's if you have the DLC, of course. The ergo wooden grip for stability. For sights, I like the speculator sight, because it can actually hold one. That's, of course, DLC only. For the slide, 
I like the aggressor barrel for this build. It gives you accuracy, stability, and damage. If you simply, if you're a technician though, and for whatever reason you want to bring this, some do, then I'd recommend the overcompensating barrel. It doesn't have the huge damage increase, but the extra accuracy and stability you'll really need. Lastly, for upper receiver, the only upper receiver it has, slime line gives you more stability. Bronco doesn't have very many weapon mods for it, however, what there is there is very, very good. On to the stealth build. For primary, this is another Car 4. Car 4 is an incredible, incredible stealth primary. Really, it is just one of the best primaries in the game. There are two things you could do here. You could do either a short barrel for concealment, or lose a little concealment and have a stealth barrel. The reason I actually chose the short barrel on this is because it doesn't lose any damage in case of a shootout whereas the stealth barrel loses quite a bit of damage in case of a shootout. Really, it's up to you and it's depending on your build and the purpose of it. Some people like to even have two car fours that for stealth, one with a stealth barrel, one with a short barrel. Really, it's up to you. For barrel extension, uh, you can only have a barrel extension, I believe, if you have a short barrel, but if you have a short barrel like me, put on a stubby compensator. Has no detriment whatsoever, makes it stronger. Good for plan B in case you get caught and need a shootout. Next, we have the competition foregrip. If you don't have the mod pack, then you could take, yeah, aftermarket hand special, that increases concealment, so you could take that. Gadget, I like the compact laser module on this one, actually, because it doesn't increase concealment like the military laser one does. If you don't have any weapon packs, though, I would recommend a tactical laser module because it only decreases concealment by one. For grip, straight grip. No disadvantage at all, makes it stealthier. For magazine, Tactical Mag has a few extra bullets and doesn't hurt anything. For sight, you actually want no sight because they hurt concealment. You could get away with something like the Professional's Choice that doesn't uh, increase it by much, but it's just not a very good sight. I prefer having none. Folding Stock hurts stability but gets you a lot of concealment, and lastly, Upper Receiver has no detriment whatsoever. On to the Stealth Secondaries. This is the Gruber Kurtz, based off the Walter PK-2, I believe it's called. You know, James Bond's gun. This one, you actually need a mod to have this gun. I don't forget, or sorry, a DLC to have this gun. I actually forget what DLC it is. I believe it's Weapon Pack 1. I'll run you through it in case you have this. This can be one of the most concealed weapons in the game. Not quite as concealed as the Swedish K, but much stealthier. Size doesn't matter, compensator. Uh, I have no laser sight on this, although... Uh, it doesn't hurt to have a pocket laser on it. For grip, I have a laser grip, no sight on it whatsoever, and no slide on it whatsoever. Almost done upgraded, but it's a tiny, tiny gun. Very stealthy. Next, we have my large stealth pistol. This one's a little bit less concealable, although the detection risk is still quite low at only 10 with this, and it's only 3 if you have chameleon in your build, so it works for a ghost too. This is a hell of a gun. This is the Signature 40. This is also a DLC gun, but you can do the almost exact same thing with the Interceptor 45, which is not a DLC gun, that's one you just get for joining the community group on Steam. So, if you don't have the DLC and you want to take this gun along with you, just make the Interceptor 45 into it. Get a Monolith Suppressor on this thing, hurts concealment quite a bit, but uh, it's a nice, nice suppressor, adds stability, hardly takes away damage, I like it. For gadget, laser uh, pocket pistol, of course, or pocket laser, can't speak today. For the grip, you could take it an ergo grip if you wanted to, you can get away with that, but personally I don't. I don't take the extended magazine, although I just noticed that I probably should, considering no extra concealment somehow. Weird. Sight, no sight, hurts concealment, and slide you can take the uh, two-tone slide. I actually didn't have this one back when I made the gun, so I'll take that now. But here we go, we have the Signature 40. This is a quite powerful pistol, and the reason you actually want, the reason why you'd want a big pistol on stealth is because this is exactly strong enough that you can headshot a guard, an unarmored guard at least, on Death Wish in stealth, not get caught, and kill him in one shot. Believe it or not, some of the other pistols won't be enough to headshot a Death Wish guard, so I guess you could consider this a Death Wish weapon, but I take this in most of my stealth missions anyway. 
That's really it for this video on general mastermind build and loadout. Next, I'll be moving on to a general build and loadout for enforcers. If you're interested in this series and would like to watch more, a link to the playlist will be both on screen as well as in the description. This series will be ever updating as new patches change old mechanics, so we'll keep you guys updated. If you're looking for some teammates to play the game with, why not join the Steam group linked in the description, and if you want to keep up with me, I've got my Facebook fan page and my Twitter page down there as well. Feel free to request I talk about anything in the game that you'd like if I haven't already talked about it in a video in the playlist, and I look forward to seeing everyone's feedback. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.